Okay, and this is uh, some more notes for seven, from 7.2, and this is example number 6 in your book, and it's on page um, 394. And um, the problem was to find the area of the region enclosed by the curve y equals x to the third and x equals y squared negative 2. And we talked about this in the previous video on how to kind of sketch it out. Now let's see how we would do this on the calculator. Now the calculator, remember, it's always y equals... So this, this y equals x cubed will be no problem. But this x equals y squared negative 2, this will be a problem. Okay? Because we don't really graph relations, just functions. So I have to break this up into two different parts. So I would solve this, y x equals y squared negative 2, because my calculator is always y equals, so I just solve it for y. So I'll add 2 to both sides. So y squared equals x plus 2, so y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. And I'll have to graph that as two different equations. The positive will give me the upper branch of the parabola, the negative will give me the lower branch of the parabola. Okay, so we, let's take a look at this. I think I already put this in. And we look in y1 and, and we have these already set up. So there's your cubic, x cubed, right there. And here's your lower branch of the parabola and the upper branch of the parabola. So if we graph that, let's go zoom forward, graph that guy, and there there's your cubic, there's the lower branch, the negative square root, and here's the positive square root coming up there. Okay, and now you've got it. Okay, so it's easy to graph in that method. Now what we're going to try to do is we want to find the area. Now we've got a couple ways to go at this. We could either go top curve minus bottom curve. In that case, I would have to divide this up into two integrals from maybe negative 2 to this point, which we'll find out more militarily is negative 1. And then from negative 1 to this, this point, this value here, which, which I don't know what that is. I'll have to calculate that out. Okay? Or, and that's going to involve two integrals, which I don't really much want to do if I could do it in one integral. So what I'm going to do is rather than integrate with respect to x and using uh, vertical rectangles, what I'll do is I'll use horizontal rectangles, and I'll integrate with respect to y. So I've got to go from here up to here with all these horizontal rectangles. And I'm going to find the length of those horizontal rectangles or the height, so to speak, by taking the right curve minus the left curve. All right, and we're going to use this form that we talked about earlier. When I reintegrate with respect to y, right curve minus left curve. And in this case, the right curve. Now, we want this, we're going to, everything's going to be in terms of y because we're going to be integrating with respect to y. So we've already got this in terms of y. This is the left curve is y squared minus 2. But the left curve, I've got to get in terms of y. So instead of having y equals x cubed, what I'll do is I'll solve for x, and I get x equals y to the one-third. So now I've got y. So I've got both my curves as functions of y. So here's my right curve, x equals y to the one-third. And this is my left curve x equals y squared minus 2. And if I take the difference of those x values, I'm actually going to get the length of this rectangle, which is base times height. That's actually the height, so to speak. Okay? And then this distance here will be delta y or dy. Okay? So there's your right curve minus left curve, right curve minus left curve. And I just have to get the limits of integration, so I have to see where they intersect. So I can get my calculator out again, and I can... I've already got the graph up, so let's go to second calculator. We've got a nice function for intersections. Um, so second and hit trace or calculate, and go down, see here where it says 5, it says intersect. So hit 5, and then we're going to find the first curve, so we'll go down and find the lower part first, then we'll go down here, and there's enter, and there's my second curve, enter, enter. And negative 1, negative 1. So this is the point we've talked about, so we did find that. So my lower limit of integration will be negative 1. And if you look over here, I actually already marked that negative 1, negative 1. And you could find that actually algebraically with these two curves. It wouldn't be too hard. Okay, now we have to find the right, or the upper bound, this point up here. Okay, because we're going to integrate from here, all these, all the way up to there. Okay, all these little horizontal rectangles are going to move up to here. 
So how do we find that point? So we'll go to, again, calculate, intersect, and I'll move up here to my top intersection point, enter. Now here's what happens. Sometimes this happens. You get stuck in the bottom curve and there's no way to get up to the top curve. And the only way I've been able to do this in the past is by going back. I mean, I, I, there's no way you'll get stuck. You can't get up to the top curve. So the only way I have been able to do that is go back and I have to just turn off the bottom part, the part that I don't want. And then if I graph that, you'll see that you just have the part that you want and then the calculator can figure it out. So this is a little thing that you need to be aware of. Then we'll go to enter, second curve, enter, and there's my y value. That's what I want. Okay? Now I don't particularly want to write all those out uh, several times, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll store the x value and then I'll find the y value because that's on both these curves. So x cubed, so I can just cube the x value and I get the y value. So that's another way to do it. So I'll go to my home screen and I'll, I'll store, I'll go x store alpha a, x store alpha a, enter, and then And I'm going to cube that. And that's going to be math 3. And there's my y. So that gives you your y. And now I'm going to store that. So I'm going to store alpha a, put that in a. And there's it. So that's a way of getting your y into a without having to rewrite it out. Okay. And I kind of indicated over here what I did. You can see over here I wrote this down. This was your x value that you got for your intersection point, but y equals x cubed, so I cubed it and I got my a. So now I'm ready to... Let's clear that and I'm ready to take the integral. Now, here's the, here's the other thing that you need to know about this. This is in terms of y, but we can't use var y vars like we've done in some other problems and just say it's y1 minus y2 because my y1, y2 is in terms of x and this is in terms of y. Like I had an x cubed, I didn't have this, so it's going to be... A, little bit of an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything in terms of of, of my functions that, that I used over here. So this would be y just like this. y to the th one third power minus y squared minus 2 dy. And I'm going to set it up and use my math 9. But I'm going to have to change my, my, my variable of integration because my calculator doesn't have y's, it just has x's, so I'll write the same thing. This is the same thing as this. Everything's the same, except instead of writing y, I write x, because that's what's going to show up on my calculator. So we'll go to um, math 9, and then I'm going to put um, cube root, so that's going to be math 4 of x uh, minus parentheses, x squared minus 2, and that's your, that's your integral. That's just your right curve minus left curve, comma, and now my, new, now my variable of integration is now x. Remember, that's a dummy variable, so it could be anything, and I'm going from negative 1, we found that out earlier, comma, to alpha a. And then hit enter. It takes a while to calculate all that out. But you see, it's, a, it's basically the same thing because it, it is a dummy variable. So we are integrating from this curve. To, this is my right curve minus the left curve from negative 1 to A. And there's your answer. 4.2149396737. Okay. And again, realize that this is the same as... This this is my this is the way I set up my integral. These are my limits of integration, so I just set it up in terms of y, and then I just change the, the variable to x. And instead of writing y to the one third, I just took the, the cube root. That's the same thing. I hope that doesn't confuse you. So it's exactly the same. And that's how you can, can find that and evaluate that integral. Okay. So you might want to take a look at that because there's a lot of little calculator techniques that came into play. I hope that helps.